Hello everyone, welcome to the Cookley Bushcraft channel. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about machetes. In particular, this one. Black and Decker. They sell this as the chop saw. Uh, to me, a chop saw is a mitre chop saw, or a drop saw. Uh, <laughs> this is quite significantly less useful, I think. <laughs> anyway, I bought this because it was cheap. And uh, yeah, it was in the lo local hardware store. I thought, yeah, quite handy. It's something you can have in the back of the snowmobile. Uh, any birch that come down across the tracks, uh, get them out of the way quick. Uh, and, yeah, what I really thought was, that looks a bit like a woodsman's pal. And, uh, yeah, I, I suppose a lot of you will have heard of the woodsman's pal, which is uh, a machete made in the USA since the, uh, since the Second World War. And uh, has a very good reputation. It was used by the army, and uh, yeah, I wondered as if this would work anywhere near as well. Like I said, it was really, really cheap, and uh, you see a lot of a lot of things like this sold as survival tools. And oh, I should have looked this up before I started filming. Uh, I think it might be called the Uni tool. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> there's a really funny one of these. Uh, a really funny machete with an axe on one side, and the, the machete side's got a grip so you can use the axe side. Uh, it's quite hilarious. I'll put a link to that. I'll put a link to that in the description if you want a laugh. Uh, anyway, back to this thing. It's got a saw on the back of it, which the woodsman's pal doesn't. Uh, the saw works a bit. It's not great. Uh, okay, you've got a lanyard hole. There's a little notch there for cutting string. I've rounded it off a little bit, so so a ferrule rod fits nicely in there. And it does work great as a ferrule rod scraper. Uh, I've taken it camping a few times, and decided there's not very much point uh, so I use it at work now and what it's quite good for is you know, delimbing pine trees and and things like that uh, yeah we've got a, a bill hook section here it's only sharpened on one side it's not great for cutting but what it is good for is lifting branches up out of the way it's uh, it's a great little little puller uh, so I mean it is actually quite handy uh, it's intended to be a gardening tool more than anything else which I'm sure it's great for clearing nettles what I've been using it a lot for recently and I put some really really <laughs> big dings in the blade uh, and I'll show you a picture of that as well but what I've been using it for is cutting stakes for marking the tracks, which the, the diameter of the wood is about an inch and a quarter, round about 30 mil. And something of this size, you can get a bit of speed and one or two cuts and it's through. But, as if you want to cut anything more substantial, it just sticks. And the edge... Uh, it's been cutting frozen wood, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've been rolling the edge quite a lot. Uh, I put a post on Instagram saying it was down to the hollow grind. I really don't think a hollow grind is a good idea on a chopping tool because the edge is so thin right behind the cutting edge. Uh, and people are saying, no, it's just cheap, soft steel. And they're right, it is that as well. Uh, but, I mean, I found out just how soft the steel is when I was putting it right. Uh, very easy to fix. Uh, well, yeah, it's great for 
just for branches of a certain diameter, you know, anything anything of t- two inches or more, you've got no chance. Well, you have, but get something thicker. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Uh, I'd say that was less than two millimetres. It's... Uh, it looks thinner than a mortar. I can check that. I can check that. I should have... I always have a mortar. I've got no mortar. I've got a tarmo. <laughs> so... Very slightly thinner than this knife, which is brand new and a little bit twisted on the spine. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Taramo is a brand that we stock in there. In the souvenir shop, uh, Taramo is a Finnish company, but that looks like Lindsblom Knivar. Uh, I think this is made in Sweden. Maybe. We're not talking about that damn thing. It's slightly thinner than this, which is... Very similar to a mortar. So, two millimetres are slightly, slightly smaller. And in this environment, you've got a lot of hardwoods and pine. Uh, you want something a bit more, a bit more substantial. Uh, and it does tend to just stick. The Woodsman's Pal, by the way, which is a quality tool, that's three millimetres and it's also got a convex edge. So, I think something with a convex grind would do much, much better. Uh, so, what I can do with this is I can work on the grind a little. But, it's going to be quite a bit thinner <laughs> by the time I finish. So, it's not worth bothering with. Comes with this sheath. Absolute junk. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's been useful. Okay, so we all know there's a lot of advantages to having a big knife. And I think for this environment, the Leuku. The one that's, the one that's been used for generations in this area. Also good in other areas. You could also... Cookery, not a bad choice. Yeah, uh, this... Fine in the garden, and uh, fine for certain jobs. Uh, the saw on the back, by the way, uh, has actually been quite useful uh, for the diameter of wood that I've been using for the stakes. You know, as if you're a bit limited for space to get a good swing in, just saw a bit down one side, chopping from the other, job's a good one. And, uh, yeah, you... It's really not a very good saw, but it works. It does work. And it's got quite a quite a good wide curve on it. And as if you do want a machete uh, for doing machete things, clearing brush, Tramontina. I used one of those when I worked as a gardener in Spain. Um, they're cheap and they're good. You might want to do a bit of work on the edge. They don't come very sharp. If you want a tool for the garden, by all means, get something like this. Uh, or as if you've got a purpose in mind. It's probably not worth buying something like this just because it's cheap. I have made good use of this. It has been money quite well spent, but as a camp tool... Not up to much. Not in this environment, at least. This? Awesome. <laughs> well, everyone. 
I'm probably have to, gonna have to edit quite a lot out of this video because I've been waffling. Uh, but never mind. I hope you've found this useful in some way or interesting. And thank you very much for watching. Please like and share, subscribe, whatever. And I'll see you all again soon for another Kukali Buscraft video. Bye for now.